All right, so we just finished up cleaning up our room, and uh, now we're going to head out. Um, we're going to take a taxi today to the station. It's just a little far away, and I think it's like 20 bus stops. It's somewhat difficult to get on a bus with all of this luggage, and so we felt like being a little bit more polite and just taking a taxi instead, um, but we could have taken a bus, and you're absolutely able to take a bus to the train station. It's only about 10 or 15 minutes longer, so it's not too bad, to be honest. So, all right. Let's go. Well, that worked really well. Yeah. We got here really early. <laughs> We're almost like 45 minutes early. I thought it was going to take 30 minutes when I checked yesterday, but I thought that there was a lot of traffic. So that's why I was like a little concerned because I was like, I don't want to leave too early and miss our train because the trains here in Japan, if you don't know, are very on time, like down to the minute. So when it says like 10.07, it's leaving at 10.07. Like the doors are closed and it's leaving the track. So you can't arrive at the station at 10.07 and expect to get on your train. All right, so we're gonna go get our tickets. I have a little like QR code that I'm gonna scan and try to find where to get our tickets. All right, see you in a minute. Figured it out. Wow, that was super quick. Yeah, I, the train attendant helped me. I was having, like, I clicked the wrong thing and it says purchase for yourself. I'm like, I don't want to purchase tickets. I just need to, and she was like, no, you press the button. And then it was like right there. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, that's a lot easier. That was super quick. So now we have 37 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All that planning for like nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, I need to get there early because I'm going to need like 10 or 15 minutes to figure out like all the stuff. But it's super easy. We're just so traumatized back there the train. <laughs> It's going to make a lot of people really unhappy to hear, but it's true. That was a really fast train. That was incredible. <laughs> wild. I think the even more wild part is the fact that there's like zero warning. One of the ladies screamed over there when they went past her. <laughs> so fast it's incredible you, it's so smooth compared to like any other train that i've ever been on like there's still little bumps and stuff it's not like it's not so bad it's not like you feel like you're jarring especially like moving as fast as we are i don't know it's like it's really impressive i don't know there is food on this train if you want we have snacks yes we do have snacks where's the snack bag ah perfect what did you get i got an apple pastry I feel like that was a good choice. I got a bunch of unhealthy snacks. So I got these like little sour gummies. I have no idea what these are, but they look kind of good. Oh, I think Kayla got these. These are like a tempura, yeah, softly fried squid. And the last thing is I got these sorbet gummies. So I'm gonna try them.
So just wanted to do a quick little seat review here. Um, in case you're ever interested in taking the Shinkansen, it's actually pretty easy to do if you want to know the truth, but you should know that there is three different types of Shinkansen trains. There is ones that stop at every Shinkansen station along the line. There's ones that stop at only the major stops along the line. And then there's one that is the fastest, which only stops at like very few selected spots. So hopefully that helps you if you're planning on booking um, trains. Like for example, we had to take the second fastest train available because the fastest train available only leaves from Tokyo and goes directly to Nagoya and Kyoto where this train stops at a few different extra stations in between. And then the local train stops at every single station in between. All right, onto the seat tour here. Um, in case you're curious, this is the green class, I think is what it's called, which means it is a slightly more premium product, meaning that instead of having like three, two seating configurations, it's a two, two seating configurations. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger. Since we're probably only going to be riding a Shinkansen once while we're here, I wanted to at least experience this higher end class before I took any other class. But yeah, hopefully that, that helps you out. Alrighty, so quick seat tour here. As you can see, there is a little adjustment here to move the seat forward and backwards. There is a nice reading light. There is a few things available here. One of them being a, like, uh, I think it's a seat heater. Then there's your reading light. And there is a plug here and then on the front there is some outlets here that you can plug in a little adapter to now these adapters are pretty limited um, you could probably plug in a laptop adapter but it's only like 200 watts so maybe more like a cell phone adapter that might be what you can expect to be able to use here there's a nice like little cubby here for um, like drinks and stuff obviously obviously there is a food tray now it is possible to order food on board i found that to be a possibility however one of the limitations with the food on board is that it's very limited compared to what you can get in the station so if you want to know my real recommendation it would be to buy some food before you get on board and here's kayla editing our previous video from costa rica i bought um like dried tempura squid as like a snack. I thought it was gonna be like crispy, but instead it just smells really bad and it's like soggy. <laughs> so that's a no. <laughs> I don't know why she does new things. I wanted to try a Japanese snack. And you're like, oh, let me pick one. And I'm like, let me pick the fish food. <laughs> I mean, it did kind of look good, not gonna lie. I totally, it looked good. I totally would have some like shrimp tempura vibes, but it might be just an acquired taste, something we don't have. Are you happy with those? Yeah. Good. It gets the fish flavor out of my mouth. <laughs> I love how you buy shrimp and then we're surprised that it tastes like fish. <laughs> You're like, what? Unbelievable. <laughs> Why does this shrimp taste like shrimp? <laughs> <laughs> Did you try the sorbet ones? Oh, try that. It's a really interesting texture. You smell the squid wafting out of the mm. bag. She walks by. Isn't it weird? It's like sorbet, but they actually like got the sorbet in it. Like it's crunchy, like like ice and sorbet. I've never had anything like that. That is the strangest texture I've ever tried. I've been... wow. But it's good. It's not bad. The taste is amazing. Pretty good. But the texture is new. It's very different. Like it literally has like a sorbet texture. I, there's not a single thing I've ever tried in my life that's kind of like similar to this. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't. I don't have anything to compare it to either. Yeah. Yeah, that's Kayla approved.
So the other interesting fact is the fact that this is the 60th 60th anniversary of the Shinkansen. Mm -hmm. So they're celebrating their 60th anniversary. Stay to the left here. Stay to the left. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty busy station. Very busy station. A little busier than I expected. So we need. We made it to Kyoto. It is very hot again. <laughs> yeah. The heat Yo. part is uh, really, really heavy. I don't know if taxi was the wrong choice here or if bus would have been like a horrible option, but it seems really busy in the taxi lot here. So. Yeah, they seem very popular here. And I, I also think it's like a busy season right now. I, I don't know why, but it seems like it's really busy. You can enjoy to have our like uh, welcome drink because just from there. Um, can I just do like, do you do like iced coffee at all? Iced coffee, sure. Yeah, okay, well, thank you. Can I do like an iced tea? Iced tea, sure. With milk and sugar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I got to go. That coffee tastes like chocolate. It's very good. I'll try it. It does taste like chocolate. Isn't that wild? That's wild. It does taste like chocolate. Alrighty, so uh, we just finished checking into our hotel. We will give you a room tour tonight. Um, we were just kind of finishing unpacking and they were giving us a nice introduction to the hotel. So I didn't feel appropriate filming that. So we will film it when we get back and we'll give everybody a quick walkthrough of our room absolutely love the place. The service here has been phenomenal. We're both very hungry and it's almost two o'clock. We've been trying to get lunch here for a little bit and just haven't made it happen. So we're going to go out and get some soba noodles. Cold soba noodles because of how hot it is outside. It's very hot. We're going on a walk. It was a very good, very good lunch, very good restaurant. The soba noodles were actually better than the ones we had the other day and the tempura yeah. was so fresh, so I highly recommend it. I'll try to talk more once we get off the busy street here. All right, now that we're off the main street, I think I can probably talk a little bit better and you could probably hear me a little bit better. What we were saying was that the cold soba noodles are very good there. They make all of their own soba noodles in-house. Um, so it was really interesting. Their primary dishes were obviously all soba noodle based, um, but they also did have some rice. Kayla mentioned that the tempura was really fresh and that was one of the things they noted on the menu is that it was uh, fresh tempura. It was very good. Also, the lady at the hotel said that Kyoto has a special, their own type of soba. So right. I noticed it was a bit thinner and a little bit like softer. So like just basically like more cooked through, I think, but um, it was really good. I highly recommend. I actually had the hot soba, even though it's really hot out. Um, but it was really ace, like air conditioned in there, so it was it was good. It's perfect. All right, so we're going to try to do a local neighborhood walking tour. Now I don't know if we're going to be able to do it right now because it is pretty hot out, and I think somebody from the has to, from the hotel has to come out to do it with us. But we're going to head back. We asked for it to be around three o'clock which may have been a mistake, but I think the person who normally does it leaves by four. So uh, 
we're gonna try to be respectful of their time and not make them stay late just to give us a neighborhood tour. But we're hoping to learn something, a little bit of a cultural experience. And that's part of the big reasons we wanted to come to Kyoto was for the cultural experiences. Welcome to the Genji Hotel in Kyoto, Japan. We just checked into our room a little while ago. So we're gonna give you a tour before we mess it all up. <laughs> Too much more at least. So when you first come in, you should take off your shoes. You should not be wearing your shoes uh, around the place, but they do give you slippers if you'd like to wear slippers. And we have uh, just a closet here that has some of the controls in it so it has controls for the heated floor in the bathroom it has controls for the air air conditioning and it also has some lighting controls inside the closet as well they give us some robes but they also said that they have the traditional no something. it starts with the y why yakuta yakuta it's so like a traditional japanese robe they have um, them available for you as well if you're more comfortable in that and well, those doors are heavy Oh, do not slam. And then this way we have like a now messy <laughs> counter and like um, desk area. And they give you all of this is complimentary. And so they give you um, three different types of teas, actually four, because they have this roasted Japanese tea, which is, well, this is the only place that we've seen this and we did try it. And it's a very like light, I wouldn't even say it's a black tea. It's like, a green, it's Some like a greenish green tea, tea yeah. yeah. And then they give you... I think it's a cookie. It might be a cookie. Yeah. And like some shortbread cookies as yes. well. Some instructions on how to do it. And then also there is a... <laughs> there is a story of Genji and that's of this area. This area was traditionally an area where the geishas were and they, they were in the tea houses, right? And they would play in the tea houses. And Genji's like a very historical sort story. It's like over 400 years old and it's like a love story and a, a bunch of other stuff. There's a whole like mythological legend behind it. So the hotel is based off of a lot of the story of Genji. So that's like a lot of the themes in this hotel you will see are all based on the stories of Genji. They actually even got um, one of the um, people at the front desk was telling us about the garden that they have upstairs. We'll try to show some of that more later, but they even picked flowers from the story of Genji. And so we are in room 302 and our flower is the Asago flower. So we can read about our flower and its significance in this book, as well as the story of Genji. Um, it's a, a summarized story because she said the actual story is like 2000 pages long, which is very long. So yeah, I'll have to read that story. I have not read it yet. But they also gave us some like postcards of the place. So this is like the ceiling. We have some from the outside garden and then we have our flower as well that our room is it's, uh, themed after. So that's very cool. We might send some postcards later. Next, we have a little seating area with a table. So there's like three different seating areas in this one room, which is wild. But it's like a couch area with a seat and a nice table. So if we decided we wanted to take our breakfast in the room, we could eat here. Um, we could also eat at this little, like, more traditional seating area as well. Then let's go into the bathroom. So we have the sink area and mirror are outside of the bathroom. 
This place actually gives you a lot of like amenities. So in here we have like bath salts. With something that I haven't seen at another hotel yet is that they give you a skincare set and it has like little packets of moisturizing cream, facial lotion, face wash, and cleansing milk. So that's, I think that's pretty unique. I feel like most places give you amenities, but they don't give you like face wash stuff. So I love that. We come into the shower area. So the floors are heated, which is really nice. And then they have a combined shower and bath area uh, with obviously all of the amenities. I love the style of this room. The style is like very nice. And then we have a little toilet room with the Japanese toilets, which all have like the bidets and like all these fancy features to their toilets. The Japanese have very fancy toilets all around. So they do their toilets right. They do their toilets well, yeah. We have a bed. This is the first hotel so far that we've had one bed and not two. They do have some chargers, ways to charge like right on the bed stand, which is kind of nice. There's a, there's a guide of all the light switches because there are a lot of light switches in this room. That is the indoor tour. I love the floors, by the way. They are like the like Japanese style floors. And then we have our own balcony, which is nice. And then they give you the traditional wooden sandals to wear outside. And we have a little seating area and we are right on the little river. So very nice. It's really hot out, but this will be great to sit out in the mornings or the evenings. And we have a great view of the other side of Kyoto. Really great room and you'll see more of the hotel later. So we just got back to the hotel. We just did a little bit of a walking tour. I don't think I filmed too much of it. Maybe as we walk around later, like maybe tomorrow, I will talk more about what we did. But right now, I think we're gonna get cleaned up and then we're going to head out to walk around. There's a few shrines and a department store that Kayla and I wanna go to. A few other things that we're going to check out. So we're going to go do that. Hopefully you'll follow along with us. Buses are very crowded. It's rush hour. Okay, so we just happen, it, it happens to be like rush hour here, so it's really busy. So we're gonna be trying to take a taxi instead uh, because it's a thousand yen. So it's just a couple bucks. I think we can make it worth it. Oh, I was hoping that was our taxi. Pretty good matcha latte, I, I won't lie. We were gonna buy some matcha in there. However, it's about three times, three or four times the price of what we just saw in the grocery store. And I'm pretty sure it might be the same brand. So we're probably gonna stop back at the grocery store and pick up some matcha because it's like 500 yen, which is like $3 comparison to like 3,000 yen here. That's a 10x That's a difference. six times, six times difference. But there were some for like a thousand but so between two and six times different spending. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go back to the grocery store because I think it's jacked up for uh, probably tourist prices. not gonna lie, this is really busy. Like this is almost as busy as it was in Shibuya Crossing, which is like insane to think about it that way, but. Yeah, it's pretty busy here. So we're gonna try to do this quick, but we got a snack. It's like two pancakes with red bean paste and chopped uh, chestnuts in the middle. It actually smells really good. Oh, it smells great. It's pretty hefty. I mean, it has some weight to it. So let's give it a go. And this is like probably a premium edition. So I don't know if there's like different versions, but this version came from a pretty nice shop. 
Red bean paste is a popular thing, Japanese uh, filling for like pastries and stuff. Yeah, I think I had a bowel bun with one, some red bean paste in it. What That's is not it? bad. That's pretty good. Pancakes are really sweet. I feel like the paste mm. almost doesn't even have a taste. Not a little bit. It's just like, yeah. It's not bad, it's good. There's like a mix of flavors. It's like sweet, it's like savory, and you can definitely taste the ch chestnuts, mm -hmm. but. The bean paste has like a little bit of like a grittiness mm -hmm. to it. So it's always interesting trying like, I mean, I, I love like sweet foods and like anything with like pancakes or waffles. So this is like perfect. This is like a Japanese version of that. Pretty good. It's a good little thing to try. Yeah, I it's don't a good know little what, snack. I don't know what it's actually called though, like the real name of it. But. Yeah, we'll look it up and we'll put it somewhere here. love the random shrines that we find. I feel like we find a lot and Kyoto is especially known for that. Kyoto has shrines almost everywhere because it's considered basically the cultural capital of Japan. At least that's what I've read and been told. No, Kayla. What is that? We got another snack. Yeah, we got another snack. St I'm still on the bean paste theme. Yes, but this is white bean paste, supposedly. Inside of like a sponge cake. I, I don't know what these called are called either. We were just walking around on the street and kind of found them. They were 70 yen a piece. So they, they're gotta be good, right? Similar to the other one. <laughs> like almost that on. Less sweet. I didn't mean to talk with my mouth full, but. Yeah, it's a little bit less sweet, but it's very good. It's very similar. It's probably the same thing. And somebody will probably comment, that's the same thing. So if it is, please tell us. We, we really do appreciate it. All right, we're back. Okay. Like that's some Harry Potter, like magic. Like it'll make you turn into a cat or something. Yeah. Look, those are they're cute little brand kicks. I think we got what we needed. Are you happy? Yeah, my second bag of matcha. Just collecting them because it saves me money in the long run. We're probably gonna end up coming back with like a five pound bag of matcha. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. All right, so we're going to head to a non-alcoholic cocktail bar. Mm -hmm. This has been something that we walked past and we asked the hotel about it. They said it's actually rarely open, but it happens to be open now. Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, I, I don't drink alcohol. I just never have, so I just never picked it up. So I was really excited when I saw that this is non-alcoholic cocktail bars because I love making non-alcoholic cocktails at home. Yeah, so we're gonna do that and then we're probably just gonna go back to the hotel because we have some laundry to get out of the dryer. Yeah. And then we're probably gonna relax for the rest of the night. Yeah, and if you don't know, the laundry and dryers here take quite a long time and sometimes they're like all in one units and they can take like five hours. Uh, it's been great because we started our laundry at four o'clock and uh, hopefully it'll be done by bedtime at nine o'clock. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. It's very, it's very light. Good. Mm. Okay. <laughs> strong tea. It's like really strong. That's a good descriptor. It's like a very strong tea. 
you know, it's a strong flavor. Yeah. Mm. Oh, strong? It's really strong. It's like very strong lavender. Yeah, you're quite a little bit of a lot.